In this video, I want to talk about sensory organs inside the muscle tendon unit. And there are two sensory organs we're going to talk about, the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ. In order to kind of explain what they do, I've drawn kind of a schematic of an arm here, part of it, um, with the humerus, ulna, slash forearm, a hand out here that's trying to carry something heavy. Um, and then elbow flexor, elbow extensor, muscle tendon units, the muscle belly is in red, the tendinous attachments are in green, and that's what we'll use to kind of explain these things. So first let's talk about the muscle spindle. All right. And the first thing that you want to know about the muscle spindle is that it resides in the muscle belly. That's where it lives. So the muscle spindle um, is there right along, um, kind of between the muscle fibers that do the actual contracting. Um, so that's where it's located. Then, uh, in the remember the muscle belly itself is the contractile part of the muscle tendon unit. So the muscle belly is what gets shorter and longer. The tendons do not um, at the end. So, um, the muscle spindle uh, is sensitive to two things. Uh, the first thing the muscle spindle is um, sensitive to is a uh, change in length or a lengthening. The other thing that a muscle spindle is sensitive to is the rate of the change in length, so how quickly it is lengthening. So, two things that it's sensitive to. And then, um, in response to those things, it actually has uh, kind of two functions that we're going to talk about. Now, let me back up just a little and just say that both the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ probably have a multitude of functions, uh, many of which we really don't understand yet at this point, but they probably work together to mediate muscle tone. Um, they probably work together for a proprioceptive or joint position fun function, um, perhaps a um, kinesthetic or you know motion sense function. Um, but what I'm going to focus on with the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon organ um, is what's traditionally described as their protective functions. And I'm going to do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's kind of the traditional explanation of these things, although they probably do much more than that. Um, and the other reason is, I think it's the easiest way to kind of remember their functions is in this kind of uh, protective scenario. All right, so muscle spindle, it senses lengthening and rate of lengthening, all right, and um, lives in the muscle belly. Now, when it senses a quick lengthening, and it doesn't have to be a really big lengthening, but just a quick lengthening, even a very small quick lengthening in the muscle belly. So let's say you were holding on to something and somebody just kind of piled some more on and oh, all of a sudden you have a lot more weight, that kind of a scenario. What the muscle spindle will do is it will sense that quick lengthening and it will set off um, two reflexes. All right, so it has two functions in terms of protection. One of the reflexes is that it gets long really quick and it um, has a monosynaptic reflex. That means there's only one synapse in this reflex. It's very simple. Um, goes up to the spinal cord and um, then synapses directly on the lower motor neuron for that muscle which comes right back down and fires uh, the same muscle that the muscle spindle is in. And that is called the stretch reflex. All right, and so you can see how that would, could be protective in the scenario we just talked about where you're carrying something and somebody, you know, all of a sudden loads a bunch more and all of a sudden, whoa, I got a lot more weight. Rather than dropping it on your toes, the stretch reflex automatically, very quickly, because it's a monosynaptic reflex, um, will fire the muscle that it's in, the, mu the muscle that the uh, muscle spindle is in, thus shortening that muscle and, you know, carrying the load.
All right. The stretch reflex is the same thing that uh, your doctor is assessing when he taps on your um, patellar tendon to see if your leg kicks out, for example. Same thing, the tap on the tendon um, deforms the tendon a little bit, causing a stretch in the muscle. Not much, but a very quick stretch in the muscle. Fires the reflex and your leg kicks out. All right. Um, so stretch reflex, and that is also... Um, used to assess deep tendon reflexes. All right. Uh, the other thing that the muscle spindle does though, it doesn't, it's not satisfied with just contracting the muscle that it's in in response to this, you know, quick stretch that it's getting. It also does something called reciprocal inhibition. All right, and what that has to do with is it'll activate the muscle that it's in, but the muscle spindle will inhibit the antagonist muscle. All right, so not only will it make the biceps or these elbow flexors contract, it will make the triceps, the elbow extensors, actually relax so the biceps don't have to fight their antagonist, they just have to fight whatever it is that they're lifting out here. All right, and so it's inhibition because it's inhibiting the triceps. It's reciprocal inhibition because it's inhib it's inhibiting the reciprocal muscle or the antagonist. Okay, so that's the muscle spindle. Now let's back up a little bit and look at the Golgi tendon organ. Okay, the Golgi tendon organ lives not in the muscle belly, but it lives, as the name might suggest, the Golgi tendon organ lives in the tendon. Okay, so let me write this up here. Okay, Golgi tendon organ, and it lives down here in the tendon. Now the tendon doesn't get shorter or longer, it doesn't contract, because it doesn't have any muscle fibers in it. Um, the, so the Golgi tendon organ isn't going to measure a change in length, a rate of change in length like the muscle spindle does. It's going to measure something different. Um, it's going to measure in that tendinous attachment, it's going to measure um, tension. All right? So, um, since that tendon doesn't get shorter or longer, it just gets more or less tension on it with a contraction of the muscle or an external load. Um, it's measuring tension in the tendon. So that's what it senses. The Golgi tendon organ then has one function or one protective response that we're going to talk about, and that is... autogenic inhibition, okay? And what autogenic inhibition is, is when the Golgi tendon organ in that tendon senses so much tension that it's afraid um, that that muscle tendon unit is going to have some damage to it because there's too much tension in the um, muscle tendon unit. And so what it will do then is after a little while, it'll give you a little while to like set your load down somewhere or something, but after a little while, it will actually inhibit the muscle tendon unit that it's in. So in this case, if you're carrying a really heavy load and your GTOs say, you know what, that is too much tension, um, I'm afraid we're going to rupture here, uh, what it will do is after a few seconds, it will actually inhibit the muscle tendon unit that's carrying that load and uh, make it weaker, essentially, to decrease the tension. It's called inhibition because it is inhibiting the muscle tendon unit that it's in. It's autogenic inhibition, auto meaning self or same, uh, because it, it inhibits the muscle tendon unit that it is in. Now, you can probably see that both of these things, the muscle spindle and the GTO, could fire at the same time. So then what happens? Um, so you have a heavy load that you're trying to carry, 
um, you're getting some uh, lengthening, maybe quick lengthening, that's firing the uh, muscle spindles, which are trying to, which will then set off the stretch reflex to actually make those muscles uh, fire more or stronger or more forcefully. But at the same time, the GTO is maybe saying, look, this is too much tension, you have to relax. So how does that work? Well, after about six seconds, the GTOs will begin to override the muscle spindles. So it'll give you long enough to get your feet out of the way or to set it down somewhere before you drop it, basically, is, is how that works. Um, same thing happens, though, if you're just stretching a muscle. So if you're um, stretching a muscle, you're going to be firing your muscle spindles because you're lengthening that muscle tendon unit. Um, and if you do enough of a stretch um, with enough tension, you're going to fire the GTOs. All right. So how does that work? Well, it takes about six seconds again for the GTOs to override the muscle spindles, and that's why you want to hold stretches for a prolonged length of time. If you just hold them for you know a few seconds, you're not going to actually um, lengthen the muscle. All right, so that is muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs, two sensory organs that live in the muscle tendon unit.